Hi, this is Midnight Menu Plus One. I'm Ray Kanata. And I'm Margo Moss. We meet here each week at Ted's Frost Top on Calhoun and Claiborne to speak to a member of the restaurant community. And we ask them to invite along a friend, a plus one. We never know who that plus one's going to be. We're going to find out in just a moment. We do know who our special guest is. It is the one, the only, Argyle. He is a graduate of the CIA. He'll explain that. He has also done just about everything you can do in the restaurant industry, and most recently at Commander's Palace. So we are very excited to have Argyle on. He'll be with us in just a few moments. And while we wait for him, Margot, how was your weekend? What did you do? Well, I didn't do everything I would like to do. I didn't do anything I really wanted to do, <laughs> actually. I really wanted to go to the gumbo taste-off cook-off in oh. the, the Treme gumbo cook-off in Armstrong Park. Right. I did not get to go. Did you hear anything about it or go? Or? No, this is my perennial problem in New Orleans. I walk around with a guilt complex all the time for all the ways I let the culture down. And uh, I did it again this weekend. <laughs> you know, there's like 35 meaningful things and fun things to do in New Orleans in a weekend, and I get to do like two or three of them. And, I, and, I all, and no matter which two or three I pick, I always feel regret <laughs> for the other ones, and I feel like I should have done the other ones. So I missed this one this week. But um, I did have a couple interesting food experiences. One of them that was kind of fun was I, uh, there are some people from a magazine I wasn't aware of called Local Palette. It's new out of Charleston, and it's a really interesting – I've read an issue or two of it, a really interesting uh, magazine. But anyway, they for some reason, they contacted me. They wanted to see the man who ate New Orleans. So we went out to lunch, and we went to a, a restaurant revolution. Have you been there yet? Uh, no. I would like to – what did you think? Was it I really liked it. Now, top, part of it amazing, is I or? like every – every time I go to lunch with, you know, interesting people – uh, I like the meal anyway, so it's hard. But, but uh, no, I think I can objectively say it was fantastic. Here's what happened. I, I wanted to get the Wiener Schnitzel, which was like an homage to uh, Kolb's, you know. Did I say Kolb's? Well, it was from before my time. How do you say it? Maybe Kolb. Kolb has got a beat. That's, that's yeah. all right. That's okay. all right. <laughs> Argyle's here now. Okay, we're going to introduce him in just a moment. He helped me out. Okay. But um, anyway, we'll get to him in just a second. But, yeah, uh, so I wanted to get the Wiener Schnitzel, but they wanted me to get the oysters, and so I got both. You know, so <laughs> it was great, and they were paying for it. Yeah, if so, they're treating, why not? It was Try so everything. awesome. They laughed all my jokes. They wanted to hear everything I had to say about New Orleans, and they let me have two entrees for lunch at one of the best restaurants in the city that I'd never been to. It doesn't get better than that, and cocktails. And then, so, so I thought I was living a charm day, so I, so I said, you know, I'm going to try out this um, Wicked. is this place I love to get, like, rockabilly clothes. And I went over there, and I said, you know, I'm just going to see if they're open because they're often not. And I ran over, and I said, I'm going to get a bowling shirt I was thinking of. I've been looking at for a while. I said, ah, you know, I just got a free $50 lunch. Why don't I get two? And then I went to bring them up, and the guy rang me up, what, buy one, get one free. It just, the day just. So you got treated to a beautiful lunch. It's one of those days. Great people, and yes. buy one, get one free bowling shirt. Yep. I think that was, all the, that was all to prepare me for election night. Well, anyway, we, we need to get to Argyle. You don't want to hear about any of that. That's not why you're listening. Uh. Argyle, welcome. Thank you for coming on our show. Oh, thanks for having me on. <laughs> I don't want to say quite a dream come true because I never got quite that far in dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you just yeah. just wait. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> All right. So tell us what you do at Commander's Palace. Well, I do a number of things. Mostly I work as a captain on the floor, um, basically a glorified waiter. I work with uh, one or two other people and make people happy. Yeah. Find out what they want, bring it to them, and try to get... Try to anticipate what they want before they even know that they've an- they're anticipating it. So you may hmm. just make it happen. Huh. And if you get a little crazy about it and you pay really fanatical attention to the details, right. magic happens. It really huh. does. I've seen it on their faces. And I see it when people ask for me or ask for whoever waited on them last time because they had such a good time then. And they want to do it again. Uh, some nights I wait on the chef's table. Yes. Some nights I supervise in the dining rooms as well. I do a little bit of that. And I, when if I'm there, I'm always on calls at sommelier because there's always a call for it. And yeah. with, we've got four certified sommeliers on duty at Commanders, which is... Now, you're certified the quarter oh, yeah. master sommeliers, right? That's right. Now, tell us about that. What does that entail? Um, How does that happen to somebody? It sounds really impressive. How does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it said that the uh, there's four levels of certification that the court actually offers. And... Basically, you study about wines, you memorize it, you measure, you, you measure the geography, and you start paying attention to the flavor profiles on the various grapes 
and you start realizing how terroir plays into it, the minerality, aromatic types versus not aromatic types. It just goes on and on and on. There's four levels of certification you go through to prove that you actually know what you're talking about. Uh, I have a, what's called a certified sommelier, which is a second level sommelier. And like I said, there are four of us who are certified at Commanders, which huh. is a lot for one restaurant. We've probably... Would, would there be anywhere in town that has more than that? No. That's probably the no. most, right? I frankly don't know of anywhere else in the country that has more than that. Wow. It, it's, it, like I said, it's absurd. We, we've had over 100 people go through the introductory program. Okay. Uh, probably a good 40 to 45 of them are still with us now. Now 100 since you've been there? Yes. Wow. How long have you been there? Uh, I've been there just about six years. So in six years, did it? You worked up to captain, or did you come in as a? Is, what what does that mean when you? Um, both when you start off on the floor, working at, in, in wait staff, you generally start off as a back waiter, and in commanders, this means you take care of making sure the tables are reset, take care of water service, bread service, and you you do the dessert service as well. And then you progress up, so you're taking care of the drinks and such as you learn them, unless you know them already, just it's a little faster. And we call it a front waiter. And a front waiter, the next step up, is a captain. So it's, it's, there's three separate areas of service that are handled by the team. And the higher up you are, the bigger the responsibility is, because you don't just do your little slot. You do your slot, and you cover the rest that doesn't get done for everyone else who's working with you. That's just how it goes. Um... I've been in this business, oh Lord, I've been in it pretty much since 1972, huh. and I went to the, the Culinary Institute and graduated in 1979, so I've been playing it for rather a while, huh. and I've tried getting away from it, and I can't do it. <laughs> it's, now, why do you try to get away from it? Because there, there was a time. What's bad about it? You seem so happy when you're doing it. Um, it, It's quite true. Uh, I stepped away for a little while because while I could see things happening, I kind of lost touch with the reality of it. Because you're putting things together in people's minds. This is not something you can touch. You put things together and you hope it works. And when it works, you watch them light up. Huh. And it's, it's almost like conjuring. Um, I also went back and forth after the culinary institute, you know, because I, I also cooked for several years. Uh, I was executive chef with Marriott for 12 years in, in Manhattan. And at one point, I simply had to step away from the business. And part of taking it seriously is that I know that if I'm cooking, I have somebody's health in my hands. Huh. And if I mess up, they're going to get hurt. Huh. And you never want to do that, ever. So I, I, I took a little hiatus. I took a desk job for a while, gained about 35 pounds, got very proficient Wait a with you Excel. Gain weight when you went away from the restaurant business. <laughs> oh, absolutely, wow, absolutely. No, we don't hear that. We hear the opposite sometimes. Well, yeah, but when you're the desk job, you're sitting down, <laughs> and a restaurant job, you're running around. Um, so that goes to my theory anyway. But that's another. <laughs> that's another. I walked everywhere I eat, and I, I think I can eat whatever I want as long as I walk there. Exactly. So you say. So you're exactly. basically saying you can eat whatever you want as long as you're serving it. You yeah. And you, <laughs> and you, you can run back off. I'll tell you, the stairs are your friend. Oh yeah yeah yeah. You may hate them at the time, but they are your friend. Right overall. right. Interesting. So you left and then got pulled back in again. Mm-hmm. Now how'd that happen? Um, my wife got a teaching job in Oswego, New York, which is right up oh. on Lake Ontario. Yeah. It's. It's an area that is absolutely gorgeous. It has about 35% unemployment. Oh. I worked. I got a, a, a temporary job on the campus for a whopping seven bucks an hour, and I've got a degree in this stuff, and that lasted about a year. Uh, we well, got a degree in in uh, culinary arts from the, at the at, at the university at, where she was teaching. No, in the CIA. Oh, and that's what the CIA Culinary is. Culinary oh, Institute of okay. America. We had those initials first, by the way. Oh. It was, uh, so you're not trained with uh, firearms. No. You're not. You, you, you don't have any secret identities. Yeah. I can't kill with a pinky or a harsh look. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you can cook up some mean food. Yes, I can. Wow. So do you still practice that? I mean, do you do a lot at home. Oh yeah. You ever fill in a commander? So they they ever have like a? <laughs> you ever, like, ever have like somebody get? I I've thought a flat about tire that. They, one thing that they do suggest is that, particularly for captains and waiters, is to put in a shift or two on the line. Because that way you start knowing the food in your fingertips, and it gives you a lot more knowledge and understanding of the food, so you can speak about it in an authoritative manner, and and be right. Well, you know, I got my degree essentially in culinary arts, 
And while my wife is a better baker than I am, I do most of the cooking at home. Oh, wow. And that's usually just the two of us, but it has been for as many as 50. How many nights do you actually get to eat at home working at Commander's? <laughs> not, not terribly many. <laughs> it's mostly lunches. So do you actually get sick of the food at Commander's ever? Do you go, oh, no, not, not that again? <laughs> Do you do family meal there, or you no, end up doing you, we, you try pretty much everything on the menu? Or? Um, it's it's mostly family meal. Yeah. Um, the menu, you never get tired of seeing it. Yeah, it it really is that good. You get used to seeing it, and it's easy to take really good food for granted, <laughs> and it's a mistake whenever you do it. <laughs> well, that's interesting to that they recommend they would l- like you to do line because I mean I've never I haven't really thought about that I know you know eating the food together family style is great be- or or tasting everything before mm-hmm. uh, makes sense but that even makes more sense because it it also gives you appreciation for the what they do in the kitchen I mean not you you have experience but right. for some of the younger waiters to see because I'm mm-hmm. curious about that too you you, uh, y'all work the front of the house, and people come in, and they come in to have an experience and uh, a dining experience, and that is presented by you and the and the f- people that they see. Mm-hmm. And then the people in the back of the house, do they feel that people are coming in just to dine, and that that's why people like? Is there any ever any? Uh, I don't want to say tension, but like... Uh, <laughs> there, there actually is a natural tension in the business between front and back of the house. It's always been there and probably always will be. Although, at Commanders, they work to actually keep that down. For one thing, the kitchen is open. If you want to come in and have a drink at the bar, you go through the kitchen. That's just how it is. It also reminds people that their food's coming out of a clean place, made by people who are very intent on what they're doing, and the cooks get reminded that they're not just putting food out into a vacuum. Mm-hmm. They see the people, and you develop a bit of a relationship that way. It's a much more organic whole. I mean, frankly, I would love to see the sous chefs, when they get their promotion, do stagiaire shifts on the front of the house floor. Huh. You know, if, if, especially if they never have, because it's something they need to see, because it's the other half of the picture. And when you have both halves put together, it's an incredibly empowering thing. Wow. So do you, do you, does that mean that <coughs> because me. they, I mean, even though it's innate, that front of the house and back of the house, but by having an open kitchen, like you said, and, and more crossover, do, does that definitely have a, minimize the uh, discrepancy? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, the rule is you get one team. Hmm. Everybody plays a different part on it, but it's one team together. And when it clicks... It is truly astonishing, the wonderful stuff that comes out. Well, now, Argyle, I want you to clear up an astonishing thing for me. <laughs> um, well, anybody that's ever eaten at Commander's Palace uh, has been amazed. I mean, there's a lot of amazing things about it, but maybe the most amazing thing I, I've wondered about, I've never sorry. had an answer for. My wife Kicking and I still talk about this. We, Our 20th wedding anniversary, you, you mm-hmm. may remember that, I that night, I was, we, we had uh, the chef's table. And we got to spend about four and a half hours with you, which was great. <laughs> and and yes, it, was. Uh, it was magical and one of the great nights of, our, night, nights of our lives. But we're back in the kitchen for four and a half hours, or whatever it was, four hours. And, you know, there wasn't a loud word spoken. There wasn't any arguments back there. You know, and I, I see, I'm watching Treme last Sunday, the TV series, and they're screaming at each other in the kitchen and chaos is happening, raining. And you'd expect that in the kitchen, I would think, behind the scenes. But it was whisper quiet. There's it's almost no zen-like, right? Yes, yeah, zen-like. And how's that? How do you keep that up all day? Because there's always somebody at the chef's table, so it can't just be for the for that audience. Nope, that, no, it's, that's it's how like, it that's how it really is. Now, yeah, do they just fight somewhere else? Do, do, <laughs> do they make you go into a store yeah. and fight? I mean, have you ever seen a there uh, has to be fight there have breakout? to be arguments of commanders. I mean, the the, the the level of excellence is so high. There's got to be a lot of tension at it's, times. It's a lot of focus. It's a lot of focus, and we hire with that in mind. Huh. That's part of it. Secondly, none of us will put up with it. Or any kind of that nonsense, because we're there about the food and the people right. and the whole experience. That's what it's all about. And if somebody's if somebody is going down because they they simply can't keep up with it, people jump in and help. Huh. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, if I'm working the chef's table and the runners have a 
have a hit where there's simply foods coming out faster than they can take it, I'll grab trays and start running it. You know, if, if something's on the floor and nobody else gets there first, the chef will pick it up. Right. You know, nothing in the restaurant is beneath anyone who works there. Right, right. Because we're it's all wonderful. there for the same thing. Yeah. And when you do that and you make it all about the food, all of a sudden it's not about personal drama. Right. Now, personal drama is what sells on television. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of reinforces a lot of negative stereotypes, which unfortunately there are some places that are like that. Yeah. But you don't want to eat there. Right. And I don't want to eat there. Well, I mean, I just I would think though that restaurant people, our experience has been, my experience has been, they're very creative people. Creative people can can be, you know, have their own way of looking at things. And you get a bunch of creative people together, and you know, you'd think there'd be conflict. I'm just amazed that that you could run at such a high level uh, without <laughs> any any. I mean, you see, you've never seen a big fight at Commanders, no. really. No. Wow, that's just that's well, that's a testament to uh, the spirit of the place, and that's really amazing. Yeah. It's it's an amazing place. It really is. So I want to know: Have you seen anything unbelievable at somewhere else where you work? As you when you were an executive chef at Marriott, or what was the? Was there anything that stands out as that you you were like, "Ooh, I cannot deal with this on a day to day basis"? Or oh, as far as you know, interpersonal garbage and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of Chinese places that I I stopped going to in New York. Um, most places, if they're at all successful, have figured out how to keep the drama under control. Okay. Because if you're not about the food, what do you got? Yeah. Well, I think it's about time for our special guest, isn't it? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, who'd you bring? Why don't you introduce him? <laughs> I brought in a colleague of mine. He's also a commander's, and his name is Tree. Tree? Tree. Yep. That's all right. So we got the same name way? Tree. T-R-E-E? -E? <laughs> yes. All like right. partridge in a pear. Now, did you, were you born with that? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. Wow. So your parents were interesting people. They are. Were they hippies? <laughs> That's oftentimes uh, what the, um, the first thought, I guess, people go to. Uh, and while they did meet each other in a commune-like setting, in what most people refer to as the summer of love. Okay, they were hippies. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cut it out. Yeah, were well, um, you can say, but they're not hippies? Well, they, they, uh, uh, they, I think they thought they were <laughs> a first short period of time. However, uh, by and large, I think that um, the origin of my names actually comes from something a little bit farther back oh. in my mother's uh, timeline. Uh, so it really had less to do with the fact that they were kind of experimental and experimenting in the day uh, and more to do with uh, the family, well, roots, as it were. All right, so you got a sister named Cloud and a <laughs> brother named... I know, no, no. you'd think, no. you'd think. It's so, actually, so my sister's name is Emily. <laughs> <laughs> my brother's name is Jeremy. <laughs> Joe. So, man. yeah, exactly. Well, you know, okay, so your answer is, yes, they were hippies, but that's just coincidental to your name being Tree. You would have yes. been Tree anyway. If they had right. been preppy stockbrokers, your exactly. name would have been Tree, too. Still, okay. Yeah. okay. And what it. do you do, what is your position at Commanders? Are you? Well, uh, I, I think I might have heard earlier uh, the, the three-man style of service uh, that the commanders uses, which in my opinion separates them from most fine dining establishments. Usually most places use a two-man style. Okay. Uh, that third man, that person in the middle is what I am. I'm that front waiter uh, who's not the back nor the captain. Uh, I guess I would be sort of like um, the rook or the bishop on the, on the huh. chessboard, you know, huh. able, able to move in places in ways in which uh, neither the captain nor the the pawn could. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We love animated. <laughs> we love animated talkers. We're trying to figure but, out what's uh, going on. Right. But right. I think, uh, yeah, it was banging on the table. Yeah, we have a rule. No rings at the table. No, that's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I would have never picked up on that. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I just noticed Mitch making a signal there. He's ah. picking up something. So continue. Oh, you're yeah, the so rook, basically, Bishop. yes, um, and, you know, I, I got to Commanders about a year after Argyle did, and, uh, you know, I was hungry uh, for that next step up, having spent my whole life in the restaurant business as well. Uh, where were you um, before Commanders? Uh, everywhere. I, well, before Commanders, I was working on a cruise ship in the South Pacific All right. uh, for Norwegian uh, okay. cruise lines, again, using that two-man style of service, and, oh. you know, just quite really wasn't satisfied with what I had experienced um, uh, so far, and so there was that still that need, that desire to uh, keep searching. And then when I ran into Commander's Palace and to Argyle, you know, I realized I'd kind of found. So Argyle's the one who recruited you for Commander's? No, 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 oh. no, no. It was completely coincidence <laughs> that, that I wound up in New Orleans. <laughs> it's just that when I got to 
uh, commanders and began to meet um, very talented, eclectic people such as Argyle, who have been in the business and, like he said, you know, uh, had come and gone, realizing ultimately this was, in fact, the calling when nothing else satisfied. Huh. You know, you're kind of reaching that point in life where you're making that turn and you're trying to decide, okay, well, you know, where can I find a place where I can do this forever? And so I got to Commanders and started meeting uh, guys like Argyle, whose wealth of knowledge was just seemingly infinite. You know, I mean, um, how to properly lay a tablecloth down to achieve a look, a feel in a room that creates the magic that he was speaking of. Uh, when there's somebody who not only knows how to crease that tablecloth in such a fashion that it's seamless with every other tablecloth, uh, making it look all as one, as well as the infinite knowledge he has on beer, wine, cheese, food, <laughs> oxygen, you name it, whatever. Geopolitics. Yeah, geopolitics, yeah. whatever. I mean, it was just like, ah, starstruck, you know, and I realized yeah. I had found a place where I could call home. And, Great. So you uh, had people yeah. you admired that were doing what? Totally. They're working there. Totally. You can sort of look up to and yeah. And Mentor. then you can add your Ment- right, Mentors. exactly. Your ingredient to the gumbo there because right. you know you'd been out there and you're languishing around in the the you know the nether regions and the lesser restaurants of the world. You know, right. hungry for something to make it feel real, so that you're not the brunt of every father-in-law's joke. Huh. Oh, my daughter's dating the <laughs> waiter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. You know what I'm saying? Those jokes. Right, oh, right. He, he flips burgers for a living. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Demeaning the very work that right. I felt most passionate about. All right. And so how do you get to that point where you hold your head up when you go out in the public? You know what I'm saying? I, I pay my bills. I have a house. You know, i got two cars. It's all paid for. You know, But it's none of that matters because you're a waiter. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then See, I don't... I, I'm See, sorry I to interrupt, but... I think New Orleans get yeah, less of that than I grew up here. You're yes, absolutely you right. I think people me, in New Orleans no, understand more. You're that, absolutely the, right. And that was going to be my next question is where y'all are from. Because mm. to me, uh, yeah, I grew up here and to me I mean my dad is not around but he would be proud if I was going out with a, a waiter mm-hmm. in this city I mean mm-hmm. so I don't but I'm sure I, I'm, I believe you and I understand that I know a lot of places aren't like right. the food isn't the culture and have the soul that it does here so um, well, it's simple in New Orleans unlike most of the country being a waiter is an honorable profession. Oh, yeah. I mean, you go to New York and Los Angeles even more so, they are actors waiting for their break, so they're doing this instead. Right, 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 right. And you get some variation on that in a lot of places. Huh. But if you take it profe- seriously professionally... It's it, European here, right? Like, very much so. I mean, that's... Very much so. What I realized when I traveled was that yeah. it had people have this same... <laughs> passion and pride and uh <laughs> you know it's funny when i moved to new orleans we we uh my wife got a job offer from uno and we wound up moving down because of that. this is right after Katrina. that's why you came oh and, okay. yeah yeah i wanted to move here since i was six and life finally said yes <laughs> but <laughs> nice. we went out to the old college inn for dinner the first night yeah, we were here yeah. and i've never been in new orleans in my life i've been in the city for maybe six hours at this point and I had a discussion for about 45 minutes on the various qualities of the various degrees of cooking of roux. <laughs> nice. The guy right. sitting at the bar next right. to me said, I'm, I'm home, man. Right. Right. This, this, is home. This, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. This exactly. is so funny. We've had so many, you know, I think every guest we've had so far on this show, and it hasn't been intentional, but every guest has been someone who didn't grow up here, you know, and hmm. yet found something beautiful about this place and, and fell in love with it and wanted to learn from it and then add their own ingredient to it. And that's, that's that was my experience. And I was here about a minute, and I realized, like, I need to be here for the rest of my life. Right. And it just snaps for certain people. There's certain yeah, people sort of in their DNA. Huh? And I concur with yeah. that. I love hearing that yeah. story. So you both, you feel that way too, huh? Oh, totally, yeah. So I you visited here probably through the cruise ship, or was that how you first visited? Or No, it was from a cruise uh, well, shipmate. A shipmate okay. had said, you've got to come try New Orleans, huh. you know. And as a result, you know, I got here and now I can't even leave. That place true. spoils you to the rest of the country, yeah. doesn't it? My mom sometimes. says, oh, you yeah. got a four days yeah. off. Why don't you come visit me? I said, no, I don't think you understand. You I come visit me. Like, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, and that's the way it is. That is the way it is. Where is your mom? Where do you? Uh, so Richmond, Virginia. Rich- okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly so. wonderful place, but yeah, not right, New Orleans. But not a food-centric town, no. No. no, no. Or music-centric. Or, or any, yeah, right, anything. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Spot on. Yeah. Spot on in that. Is that where you grew up to? You grew up in Richmond? I would have to say primarily. uh, You know, when my parents split, my father went to Florida. My mother uh, went to Virginia. And 
Uh, it, it was the impetus for my bipolar southern and growing up. You know, <laughs> Jacksonville, Richmond, yeah, you okay. know, Newport News, Orlando, you know, bounce, bounce, right, bounce. Right. Right. Uh, um, well, let me ask you what I was going to Oh, okay. So we talked about the name Tree, and I came in wanting to ask about Argyle. Now, how'd you get the name Argyle? <laughs> well, is that a family name, too? Are you Scottish? It's a family name. I am absolutely not Scottish. Um, <laughs> I, I am ethnically mostly Swedish, which I didn't really understand oh. until I was in Scandinavia. Ah, uh, um, well, I'm part Norwegian, so I hate you now. I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Norwegians I are jealous of Swedes because they get older. every year. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, I, I, I met my doppelganger. All right, uh. he's on. He's on the ferry coming back from Gotland. He just a little less of a mustache, the same hairline, same style of clothes, <laughs> same basic build, same eyeglasses, except he spoke fluent Swedish. Ah. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, I had a grandmother about five generations back who liked the name, and it's been in the family ever since. Wow. Huh. You know, they always change the middle name so there's no numbers, no juniors, no seniors, none of that nonsense. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my, my dad is, is Argyle Roderick. My, my grandfather was Argyle Meekham. Um, See, those are all Scottish names, though, aren't they? Isn't Meekham Scottish, too? I feel like it is. It might be. I, I honestly don't know. And Roderick sounds Scottish to me, too, to be honest. I think they're hiding Certainly something British from Isles. you. They, they wouldn't surprise me either. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did the mailman look like? Did he wear a mailman? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, I, I mean, now, I was, I now was, is, your, is your wife a big eater, too? Now, I ran into you once at Bayona, mm-hmm. and you were there dining with your wife. Yep. And it was my first meal at Bayona. I had been in New Orleans about a year or two. So I guess I got here about the same time you did. So uh, yeah. this would be about 2008. And I, but I knew who you were. You were already a celebrity, and I, lo- I in my mind, and I looked over uh, and I saw you smiling broadly, and I knew either you're having a great conversation with your wife, or the food was really good, or both. But <laughs> it's I was it's hoping actually both. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I had the best. I had the best uh, scallops of my life uh, mm-hmm. for lunch there at Bayona, and on the way out, I think I said that to you. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, but that was that's a good sign. You walk into a place, and Argyle's already there, and he's smiling big <laughs> on his day off. He's, he's choosing to eat there. Yeah, Bayona yeah. is one of my favorite yeah. places to eat out when I can. Yeah, it doesn't happen often enough. So I figure if I get there once a year, I'm doing good. So is your wife a big foodie? You said she bakes better than you mm-hmm. do, but is, oh, yeah, she, she's she been around you for a while. Goddess. So how long have you been married? Uh, we're going on 28 years. All right. Yeah. Not fatal yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you were saying, Tree, that uh, to meet a woman, you know, you... you I'm, I'm getting a little tongue-tied here. That you're giving me a great look. <laughs> I know they can't see it on the radio. He's got piercing eyes. He does. I'm, I'm a little yeah. lulled here. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, were you seeing a woman before you moved to New Orleans? Oh, well, the shipmate that I'm referring oh, to is my partner, Tanya. Okay. Yeah. So and she knew what she was getting into before you moved to New Orleans and were a waiter at Commander's. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, we had many long hours of conversations on the ship. She being a native New Orleanian. Oh, okay. Uh, See that, and she had New Orleans to compare ship life to. I thought the ship was great. I probably could have stayed on the ship forever, <laughs> you know. But uh, she saw something. She saw a potential there uh, that I couldn't recognize because of the fact that I'd never been here. Uh huh. So okay. a place where you're still surrounded by water. Yeah, just like <laughs> yes, the ship. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. No, and I would never just a go much back. Bigger ship. Yeah, it's a much bigger <laughs> ship. You're absolutely right. You're right. I'm much denser in it anyway. You know, it's just, the nooks and crannies. I mean, like, uh, Lillette is to Tanya what uh, Bayona is to Sandra for Argyle. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you one other thing. Whoa, I'll have say about that again. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Lillette is to Tanya, my partner. Yeah. Uh, what Bayona is to Sandra Argyle's partner. Oh, that's yeah. her favorite. Yes. Oh, we yes. love Lillette, I, too. I think yeah. I'd like your partner because yeah. I go to Lillette yeah. by myself. Oh, yeah. oh that's My husband place. goes out to hear music. Yeah. First, I go out and eat and come home, and then he goes out to hear music. And Lillette is one of my favorites to go. I like I'm going to Lillette and then go next there. door to Bolney Tavern oh, and have a yeah. drink over there, too. Yeah. That's great. That's some, one, that's some of the best drinks in the city. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. So you guys go to Lillette a lot? Uh, I'd have to say not as much as we want. <laughs> but we get there as often as we can. Now, how's your schedule? Is your, uh, is your schedule... What does she do for... Oh, she's still... Is she still... Doing the well, no, uh, yeah. no. Uh, uh, when when uh, she came back, her contract with the cruise ship company ended sooner than mine. So I got uh, you know stuck out there without her for a while, and uh, we continued to um, sort of see each other over the phone, if you will, you know, until eventually I got free and I was able to come join her. 
Um, but she had started running an art gallery in Central City. Um, and that went on oh, for number uh, the Big Top. Three Wing oh. Circus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That, she That's ran a cool that? spot. Yeah. She still run that? No. Okay. Uh, about uh, nine months ago, eight and a half months ago now, uh, we had our first child. Congratulations. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. And on day three, she realized uh, she could no longer consider the possibility of going back. Uh, so she uh, passed the torch on to uh, these gals who uh, she had been working with. And uh, so they now continue on the work there at the uh, Big Top, which is a, a 501c3 right, right. not-for-profit venue that uh, helps a lot of the artists that don't have a body of work big enough to, say, show on Julia Street. Right. Um, get introduced uh, to the art-loving culture here in New Orleans. So, right. you know, you can go check it out. It's, it's a little hard to get to. It's in Central City. It's at night mostly when things are going down. So it's not really off the beaten or even on the beaten path in any way. So, you know, I mean, it's almost like... Yeah, but Central yeah. City, though, yeah. I mean, I'll, what's happening in O.C. Haley, for example, is just really... This is true. Mm -hmm. I can't take that away from you. It's you're a lot like right. Brett. No, you're right. You you're know, right. in right. uptown. Right. You're me, yeah. And, highly and that's all a yep. bunch I of highly motivated overdue, that's right. uh, girls right. over there, because they, they, they used to put on art shows in people's homes, right? Right. And then oh, yeah, it turned into... Oh, yeah, you're going way into, back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah you're going back into the... So that's a good group of... I love when she does that. I love, like, your long New Orleans memory. Oh, yeah. She's going to the way back. Yeah, you're going back to Tracy and Adele. And, yes, and Kira. Kira. Yeah, you're right, exactly. Wow. So, so right. she's a mom. Cool. way back, right. Well, that's great. But uh, anyway, she has um, moved on, and she is now working. Um, As a mom? Well, no. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. But uh, she's now uh, working uh, with uh, Jazz and Heritage Foundation, and she's put on the Treme Gumbo Fest. Uh, oh, She's the mar excellent. market quarter for them and Bayou Boogaloo. And, oh, wow. Uh, Tell us her first Fest. name again. So Tanya, T -A -A -A. Tanya. Like my beloved revolutionary Wait. Tanya. Okay. Oh, what's your last name? Uh, Vidal, as in okay. Sassoon, I know but no not Tanya, the same family. I thought right. for a second it was going to be her. Okay, got mm. it. <laughs> um, well, th I'm going to put you all on the spot. About now. I'm cool. going to ask you each to pick a number. And I'm going to start with you, Argyle. Between 1 and 217. And we are going to flip through this book that was very popular in 1982. <laughs> uh, and you have to answer the question that we asked. This is called the Book of Questions. Okay. So no pleading the fifth. Yes. Ah. You can lie to e us, but you got to <laughs> answer it. Um, so, please pick a number. 17. 17? Yeah. Okay. Huh. 17. So confident in 17. What's 17? I have no idea. Will you <laughs> read it tonight? Sure, I'll read it. Number 17. I'm I will definitely out. read it. Argyle, would you be willing to become extremely ugly physically if it meant you could live for a thousand years at any physical age you choose? I think I'm already working on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I was Come thinking, on, I'm, you're New Orleans <laughs> sexy. I'm going, like, I'm going like, you know, actually, I'm getting a little uglier yeah. every day. This this mm. answer is this is easier to answer every day for me. Um, if a man doesn't put on uh, at least five to ten pounds when they first either marry a New Orleans girl or move to New Orleans, then I think it, they're they're not. They're doing something wrong. They're doing, because not doing it right. That's, yeah, that's true. you're not enjoying life. So I'm not saying that's mm -hmm. what. Come on, you're going to affect I'm not, his I'm answer. I'm not saying though. anything <laughs> about. Uh, okay, go ahead. You're prejudicing his answer. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, it's physical is one part. The rest comes from within. Yeah. And I'm assuming for the moment that it means live for a thousand years, healthy. Healthy. Yeah, yet healthy and not in pain. Uh, that, that would be yes, good. Yes. Yes. Okay, so you would be you'd be fine with living for a thousand years. Yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, I mean, there's enough technology that I can guess about that I won't get to see as it is. And you think about, you know, people like my grandfather who, would see, if he was if he were still alive, he would be about 102. Mm. And you think of what's happened in the last century. It's amazing. Huh. Absolutely amazing. And I think it'd be really cool to see what happens next. Yeah, he yeah. was born. There were no airplanes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I can't even That's imagine right. things changing that much, though. And as single it has phone the past lines years. were a new thing. It was right. all party lines. World War I hadn't happened yet. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Wow. Okay. Excellent. All right. All right. Tree, are you ready? Go for it. Pick a number, please. Uh, I'll do 180. Determine your fate. 
Okay. You know we've never, never had yet? We've never had anybody pick the same number. We've we got we okay. to we decide ahead of time. <laughs> oh, we're going to allow that. That would have been really good. That would have been really good. Sure, 17. 17. Okay, you're invited to a party that will be attended by many fascinating... We've... Okay, we've asked this question on another show. It's so you funny, two people picked the same right, number. Out of 217, what are the odds? Play the lottery tonight. Yeah, all right. Well, do you mean to okay, pick another question? One, well, I'm going to tell it to you, but I mean, we need to make it more already? complicated. Because we'll more fascinating rest, yeah. people you've never met. Would you want to go if you had to go by yourself and naked? Because who wouldn't go to their by themselves yeah, a no, party that, in New Orleans to me Come that's on. like that's a very 1982 question like yeah. oh yeah mm-hmm. like what's wrong with people people can't hang out by themselves that's in early the ni- Reagan 1982 era, you can tell, yeah. everybody's, <laughs> okay. everybody's so did you throw in the naked thing Am yes, I, was yes, that I did. Yes. no I did <laughs> this is would, her gift would yeah. you have the balls to go to a party wow. naked if uh, are you wowing because I said balls no, to him or <laughs> I just like to hear the word balls <laughs> yeah of course I would uh, naked? Yeah, I would go naked in a heartbeat. I bicycle uptown naked all the time. <laughs> oh, stop. Wait. Forget that question. Let's yeah. transition into that. <laughs> bicycle naked in uptown. Yeah, yeah. You live in uptown? Uh, I live in the 12th Ward. 12th Ward is the best okay. ward. Yeah, okay. Uh, but sometimes, Where in uptown do you bicycle uh, naked? Not that I want to go you know, to camp out there. I'm just <laughs> is, that, is that a uh, <laughs> liberation, liberating? It really or? is. It really Have you been is. arrested yet for this? No, not yet. I keep I'm expecting that. Now, though. Yeah, I don't I like keep, it too yeah, political no, I keep here. Things are changing. Yeah, no, I yeah, keep people no. listen to this show. Yes, it's okay. okay. It's okay. The it's political right. atmosphere is changing yeah, here. Whatever. I think you're gonna. This could, they're gonna. That's when we know New Orleans is going downhill, yeah. and it's becoming the American city when they start uh, arresting nudists for riding oh, no. bikes. But let me tell you, know. forget just the nudist part. Forget just the nudist part. So you do anything else naked? No, no, no. Just bicycling. Let's just say you get arrested while you're naked. Yeah. And you've got no ID. Vest balls. Yeah. That's balls. Because they, because they, got no ID. Off. Yeah, because where do you right. carry your and then ID? And then you spend an extra day in You've thought about prison. this bicycling. <laughs> and by the way, where that's do you the keep only your ID? I don't want to visit. I want to say it's an effing rush. It's a rush. <laughs> this yeah. is, you, can, you don't need drugs you, when you're doing that. You can go stone cold sober, and it's a rush. So you don't carry an ID? No. Yeah, because, I mean. And you buzz La Bonte Roule, you know, La Bonte Roule, you know, naked. It's a rush. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, I'm keeping an eye out for this. <laughs> if I see it, I won't turn you in. I'll know who you it was. Now, if Ray Leap starts your bicycle into some kid's uh, uh, rope swing. I'm going to start walking to restaurants yeah. naked. <laughs> it's yeah. be my thing. All right. <laughs> commanders, next time. Commanders naked. Commando. Let's get more up. Commando, oh, commander. You guys are laughing. You're acting all cool. Guess some commando commanders. Nice. Okay, y'all are, commanders, commando. y'all are very professional there. Yeah, and you probably know how to handle any situation. If Brooke wouldn't let you in. I'd let you in. Like... One of my questions was going to be about commanders. Like, if you have a table that's lingering, I had this serious question. But what? No, I won't get off the naked thing just yet. Okay, so how would how would they? Who would handle that if someone came in in a a a suit and a jacket and tie, but naked from the waist down? (laughs) Daytime or nighttime? Um, nighttime. I'm gonna let Argot. Who would be? Uh, <laughs> no, how would they handle that? Would they just smile? And is that in the manual? In the you, you, you uh-huh. greet them and you inform them that unfortunately they're, they're not dressed for the code. We do have a dress code. You could code. say so how often do you send people. Can away you use that anytime days, you want? Not. Most days, at least once. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, people tend mm-hmm. to show up in short pants, uh, and we have a dress code. Men. I don't like seeing men in shorts. It makes me, the meal's not as good. I stopped wearing shorts after going to Italy in 1998. I've worn them in, since my 20s. We've made an exception. Men's knees are gross. One was a, <laughs> uh, a veteran who came in who had lost both legs below the knee. Oh. So right. his, his legs were, in fact, covered by the shorter pants he was wearing. Cool. Oh, the, well, Absolutely. But essentially, in his case, I don't want to be too, exactly. I don't be too crude, but exactly. in his case, the shorts were long pants. Exactly. Right. Um, as far as... As the rest of it, you know, if a guy wants to come in wearing a kilt and is wearing proper socks and everything else, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. It, it is formal wear. Right. Um, we've had women occasionally coming in in designer shorts, and you can't do it, but if you have a scarf, you can make a skirt out of that. Ah. You know, there, there are ways of getting up. around things. Huh. You know, it, it, the whole thing is, it is slightly upscale, a little dressy, and that's part of it. Yes. And people might be put off by it at first but when they start getting into it they understand it's part of the atmosphere and it really does work mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there are those of us who think that commanders should have kept the jacket entire requirement for men now when was yes. that uh that jettisoned that died with with katrina 
Interesting. Oh, really? Now, wasn't yeah. Commander shut down after Katrina for a little while for renovations, right? They spent about $6 million, I think I read, uh, renovating. 13 months. 13 months. That must have killed some people in town. But when well, it reopened, it must have just been glorious, huh? Yeah. It's uh, essentially, the restaurant came to a halt for the same reason everything else did. Before Katrina? No. When after. Katrina hit. Okay. And the problem is we had some structural damage to the building. And when Hurricane Rita came through a few weeks later, everything else got soaked because they hadn't been able to get other repairs done. And the mold goes from that. So they had to literally take the entire building apart, go for mold remediation, replace the structural damage, wow. and put it back together. Now, when I came in, I moved to New Orleans in 2006. And I came down here in July. You know, to do, you know, get the paperwork signed with the university, arrange for an apartment and all that jazz. And I went over to Commander's to interview. And the kitchen, at that point, was raw concrete and conduits. They had a wow. little workplace hanging around. And you know, huh. I've seen restaurants in the building stages before. So it, it's fine. I recognize what was happening. But it's, it's a phenomenal amount of work. Huh. They, they essentially rebuilt the restaurant and opened it 130 years old, brand new. Wow. Incredible. So, so when y'all experienced... Katrina, what was it like for you? Bef- e- I mean, even before Katrina, like, was there, did they get everybody together and say, we're going to, you know, you have to evacuate and leave? Did did everybody stay? And after Katrina, how did y'all stay in touch with uh, other That's staff a question and, I'm not really able to answer. I was living in New York at that time. Yeah, he came right I was up in Oswego. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Um, we came down after us for Gustav. We, we knew it was coming in. We knew we were going to be evacuating. Uh, two days before it hit, we came through and did a full triage on the food. And i got to tell you something. A Commander's Cheesecake is a wonderful, wonderful refugee host gift. Uh. <laughs> I had some people in Memphis who were very happy with me. Uh, we, we got the place closed up, boarded up. We came back five days later, cleaned it out, put it back together, and got, and got along with it. Um, Katrina was a little bit different just because it took so long mm-hmm. you know the city itself was, was without power for a long time right. and then you have to do the cleanup, the rebuilding and everything else and then they had to restaff and in that time you know unemployment benefits for waiters are not terribly much Yeah. and people had dispersed and some people started putting down roots where they were and decided to stay there some people came back. I think they had, we had some good percentage of people who did come back for it. And most of those did not stay at Commanders for more than a year after that. Hmm. Huh. It's, um, it's an interesting situation. I sort of walked in on the tail end of it, so I had no context for knowing what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I knew is that it was a fine place to work, and we were busy as all get out. Hmm. And that was good. Argyle, I haven't a word you said since you said cheesecake. <laughs> I hear about every third word. Well, uh, I get of fixed on cheesecake. <coughs> oh, speaking of their I cheesecake, can, I can see you going to take away my it, cheesecake story? No, I'm not okay, going to take away. Well, my cheesecake question, really, but go ahead. I no, go might. Ahead. We might be psychically linked. I doubt I it, but um, I understand it takes a long time to make the cheesecake, uh, here right? We go, yeah. And I learned that from right. from uh, the man who ate New Orleans. <laughs> I mean, I kn- <laughs> I know how fabulous it is, but I just heard it again mm-hmm. in uh, watching that. That uh, it takes about five days. So that Crazy. is not a shortcut. Nope. And that we we have this thing on our show where we ask uh, folks about a shortcut that we're not trying to find out mm. some juicy, you know, way your restaurants are. Uh, cheating people, but honestly, just trying to learn, like, if there's a shortcut in what y'all do that would save you time, but not affect quality or, but something interesting that, uh, you know, you can't cut shortcut the cheesecake. No. But it as being a, in a, in the wait staff and is there something that. You, you run out of an ingredient. There's something that you can substitute that's or, quick and easy. Or, or to full, I mean, yeah. to a process thing that you do that you're required to do that takes a long time. Like you said, folding the 
the table. Wait a minute, are you talking about food or service? Well, well it could be with one. y'all, mm. I would like to know about service. It's usually a chef kind of question, but you could get you could you could reimagine it. Um, or one. you could tell us some secret uh, <laughs> chef shortcut from the commanders. But the the chef. They, they really don't use shortcuts. It's, it's classic long style cooking, and that's where the food is the way it is. Yeah. Huh. You know, it's just like if you do X, you get Y. And if you do something else, you get something else. Yeah, it would so not So you're no be. help to us whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not anyway. I, will t- I will tell you one of the things we do for the bar certain of the cocktails we make, Here some we of the go. more involved ones, the ones that don't necessarily involve a lot of fresh juices and such, can be batched. Uh. Not all drinks can be batched, but if you h- have. Um, you know, say Crescent City coolers, right? Mm-hmm. You got guava rum, you got your bitters and all this other good stuff. You put it all together, you can make that by the gallon. Huh. Now, it still has to be, you know, shaken with ice and have the soda added. And it's all the quality. And all the quality is there, but you're doing a bunch at once. Brandy and that can milk last punch together a while like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Brandy milk punch is another one that uh. works very well with that. Brunches. Mm. And uh. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the, the bad thing about that is I know how to make it. So <laughs> there's no escape. <laughs> 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 What, what's what's your answer, Tree? Well, you know, for me, uh, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. And this is all to my mentor, uh, Miss Carol, in the front of the house. Uh, uh, God bless her; I love her to death. You know, uh, you can set a table uh, during a rush, but you cannot rush setting a table. Huh? And that's just the way I see it. All right? It's not worth it. It goes along with that maintaining the serene facade and paddling like mad underneath. <laughs> <laughs> You, you can't you can't appear rushed that's that's huh. well you know I mean it's like you know I tell, I tell so many of the, uh, the the back waiters who you know come in and they look a lot like I did when I first got there just hungry wanting to have that air of uh, professionalism to what it is that they're seeking and and I feel that they, they're paying attention you know when I feel they're paying attention you know I say look you know uh, not everybody who comes here eats here every day you know this could be some guy out in the metries one kick at the can yeah, yeah, yeah. His wife's been talking about wanting to go do this forever, you know, and he has been saving up his pennies, right? And so here they come. You know, they're coming up the stairs. Uh, the guy has got, you know, a couple hundred bucks in his pocket. Wife's all excited. She's put on her best new dress. And they walk into the room, and they walk up to the table, and the napkins are skew, and the forks aren't parallel, nothing is squared on the table. And what does that table scream? We weren't anticipating you. Huh. He made the reservations three months ago in, a, in advance of the anniversary to make sure that the time and the date was right. You know what I'm saying? He saved yeah. up his money. He ironed his damn pants for once. You know, right. and he's coming up the stairs, and this table looks like shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, to me, that is the, you know, boom. It doesn't even matter what you do after that. You know, you just burst the bubble. Right, right. You know, you burst the bubble. And no longer, and now you're playing catch up. You're you're from behind the rest of the night. You've got to go so far over the top at that point. Huh. Whereas if you just took the time to slow your roll and calm your mind, you know what I'm saying, and set that table like, yay, we knew you were coming at eight thirty, because we did. Huh. We know your name. We know why you're here. We know huh. you're celebrating that thirty fifth anniversary. We know this already. Huh. Right, and so that table is set, and when you approach the table, boom! Now you're on easy street at that point. Everything you do at this point is just blowing their mind instead of blowing their bubbles. Huh. Yeah. And so uh, for me, no shortcuts, no shortcuts. Yeah. That's the way I see it. All right. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Well, you know, it makes me think of. Uh, I, I tell a story sometimes when I try to illustrate what makes New Orleans different, and uh, talking about the sort of the the totality of the approach of some of the fine restaurants in New Orleans, where they really. It, you know, a lot of places where I grew up in New York and so forth, that, you know, the food would be great, but the service is almost intentionally rude because they're trying to show that they're that this is an elite place, you know? Mm. And you don't get that in New Orleans as much, <laughs> no. especially not in Commanders. No, so down no. to earth. Yes. And, and yet, at the same time, this attention to all the detail, like you talk about, and the excellence. And, mm-hmm. and to me, the best illustration I think I've ever had of that, uh, of just the incredible over-the-top hospitality uh, and the warmth was, uh, again, that chef's table night, uh, you know, 10 or 11 courses. And we get to the end of it. Of course, Argyle's the you know perfect, sublime, you know, whole nother level of of, of 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 service or whatever. And then we get to the end of it, and I'll tell you what: after about eleven, what are they half drinks? Really, basically half yeah. a glass of wine each time. Yeah. So you've had you know you've had about five and a half glasses of wine, and you've been gorging yourself, you know, for hours. <laughs> I, you know, my memory starts to get a little fuzzy at the end of the last course. But what sticks out is the cheesecake again. I'm going back to the cheesecake. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
But you're eating these these meals, and they're pretty, you know, significant courses each one. I mean, they're not thin. I mean, you know, some are smaller than others. But then you get then you get dessert. I'm expecting a you know a little something, and <laughs> and then Arnold brings out six full size beefy desserts that aren't just delicious, but they're big, you know. For the two of us, my wife and I, so we get about three desserts each, and I, I'm trying my best because it's so good, but I can't get more than about a forkful of each down, you know? And I look over at Argyle, he's smiling, he's seen this happen so many times, and I said to, to him, I kind of, you know, I said, Argyle, like, has anyone ever finished a dessert? And he, he laughs, like, of course not, why would you even ask that? <laughs> and he told me a story about the Tulane football team that came uh, their freshman year, I think, and they had this great meal. Some sponsor took him out to that, and then he came back right before graduation and decided, we're going we're gonna to do it again, this time we're going to finish the dessert big giant guys and they never never even came close and I, I pondered I, got, I went home and I, I thought about it I've been thinking about it for a couple of years now why do you do it then I mean it just kind of cuts into the profit why, why would you do that and to me am I right it's, to me it's a sign of just overwhelming hospitality it sends a message it's not even about the yep. food at that point it's to say we love you and we're glad you were here and you can't even eat this We're gonna, and we, know, we all know it and we're going to give it to you anyway because we want to show that we're never going to skimp that's right am I right on that, that that's it in a nutshell I mean it's like we try to give you a little bit of everything because okay. we're, it's what we're doing all night. It's just a little more, more visual and tactile than most. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, it's, it, it's, I mean, from my perspective, it's fun watching people's face light up because we're, we're getting back to touching somebody's inner four-year-old. Uh-huh. You know, you look at it, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> They can't believe their eyes. You just improved the story for me. Thank you. I told that story a hundred <laughs> times. Now I can do it better. I go, my inner four-year-old came out. Oh, uh, perfect. Oh, yeah. Same thing happens with the pancakes at brunch, by the way. Really? Oh, yeah. Something I haven't had yet. Oh, good. Oh, you need All to. Right. Yeah, you, Have you, you back. had that? Have you had that, Margo? Not the you pancakes, no. Oh, you've probably been <laughs> at Commander's a hundred times growing up here and all, right? Not a hundred, but I, I remember probably every experience. And I went as young. My family... Uh, they didn't, uh, growing up here, people bring kids, but mm-hmm. they're, we're ready for it, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's a yes, big deal. It's yeah. a big deal. My son, but it's my son, we asked him, 747 restaurants in New Orleans, we asked him where he, at least that was what it was when, mm-hmm. I, when I finished my quest, I'll, probably more now, but <laughs> it, uh, we asked him where he wanted to eat, and he's been to a couple hundred probably, just be, hanging around with me, maybe 300, and he... Uh, he could pick Commanders as as a place he wanted to go for his birthday, and still he brags to his friends. Still, he's not that kind of person. He enjoys food. At least he's at least least vocal of the, of the four of us mm-hmm. in the family, and he still brags on Commanders all the time. Works into the conversation. Awesome. Well, was, we'll keep a table for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll remember the rest of his life where he was sitting. He remember what he ate. That's the kind of meals you have at Commanders, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've eaten there a few times with my wife. I know where I was sitting each and every one because, uh-huh. yeah, it's that distinctive. So, Tree, how many times did you eat at Commanders before you started working at Commanders? How many times had I, had I eaten? Had you had a meal there before you worked there? No. Wow. No. I remember distinctively one of the questions being asked in my interview uh, by Don, who is God on Earth uh, for us, or Br'er Fox, if you were Br'er Rabbit. Um, <laughs> he I love says, all these analogies. Yeah, he says, uh, he says, you know, have you, ever, have you ever heard of us? And I remember I said, no, I, I can't say that I have. <laughs> But it was when I got up and left his office and was headed out of the restaurant on my own, I was walking uh, back through the bar into the kitchen, seeing the chef's table from the other side. And all of a sudden, it was like tumblers in the lock. I was like, wait a minute. I have seen this on the Food Network like a dozen Uh. times. (laughs) You know, it was like I'd answered no honestly. Yeah. But then it was seeing the kitchen from the camera's point of view yeah. that it was like kapayao. Um, but just real quick, can I go back to the, the uh, dessert question real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, sure. because I've got a distinct philosophy on this. Every other restaurant that I've ever been involved with, and it's been many, uh, more, so many I've forgotten how many restaurants, how many kitchens I've been in. Every other kitchen I've ever stood in would kill kill to have a fraction of the dessert sales that come out of that little teeny tiny room yeah, yeah, behind yeah. the chef's table. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, you know, I wondered why this was. I mean, like, why is it that everyone gets dessert? Yeah. No one skips dessert at Commander's Palace. And this goes back to your dessert bomb question, yeah. right? And I, I started observing and paying attention, and everything is made fresh twice every day. Wow. Except for the cheesecake, which takes five days to make, <laughs> right? But fresh pecan pie baked twice every day. Bread pudding souffle baked to order with whiskey cream sauce. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, nobody skips that. They stick their foot in it every single shift. <laughs> and there's, like, nine full-time pastry chefs. More than any pastry wow. chef I've seen. Nine. Nine full-time pastry chefs. Not nine at once. Well, they're, they're nine full-time employees working in that little shop. Wow. Right? All the time. Right? Wow. And so, you know... I look back in my mind's eye, and I remember all the dining rooms that I have sat in before. And, you know, you, you're sitting there, and you see the waiter coming across with that fake plastic tray of desserts. <laughs> you know? And before they've even approached your table, before they've even opened their mouth, you're already shaking your head no. And I then ask myself, why is that? Well, of course, I know why. Because all those desserts were made in some central kitchen by somebody with absolutely no love for the dish whatsoever. They're just huh. cranking them out until the shift is over. Then they're frozen for God knows how long in some deep freezer, sliced open by somebody who apparently can't even count as one slice is invariably <laughs> larger than the other. <laughs> Microwave for 90 seconds. You know, blistering hot on the outside. Stone cold frozen in the middle. You know, who wants that crap? But when the, when the dish is made at the time you ordered your entree, I mean, who can resist that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who can resist it? Yeah. And it's just an amazing thing. I mean, the dessert sales alone... It's just an amazing facet, one little small facet of this amazing restaurant. I like to call uh, Commander's Palace my vortex of uh. happiness. <laughs> <laughs> huh, you know, it makes me think of something. You know, I'm a pastor by trade, right? And uh, there's a story mm -hmm. maybe familiar of Jesus makes wine, his first miracle, he makes all this wine. The, all the Baptists forget about this story, you know? <laughs> and yeah, that's the all about this thinking here. it's raisin well, paste. They don't know what grapes do when they get crushed in hot weather. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, he makes the best wine after they've already been drinking for a long time. And somebody comments, like, why would you save the best wine for last? You know, we've already, we, 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 we can't tell anymore, you know. And I kind of feel that way with dessert at a lot of places. You know, you've already had a big, robust meal at a fancy restaurant. You're not going to go to eat light. And by the t at the end, you know, maybe some people slack off on the dessert because they figure, well, you know, people aren't going to be able to tell the difference by this point anyway. They're kind of overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. not Commanders. Commander says yeah. we're going we're gonna to be excellent from beginning to end. Oh, yeah. From mm -hmm. first to last, right. and just because at the end of the meal we're not going to be like other folks do and stick it in the microwave, right. we're going to make everything fresh. And, huh. and this is exactly what Don says. You know, from the time the bell rings to the time the bell rings. Huh. Yep. You know, up here. If you're going to do it, you don't yeah. coast at any you point do it at right. all. Right. And there's really only one way to do that. Wow. Well, we're running out of time. Did you have another question? I had one more. You got, you go, have another? go ahead. You sure? I could keep them here all night, but no, <laughs> please, go ahead. All right. Well, this is, okay, I'm always fast. Another thing that makes it seems magical to me about Commanders sets it apart is that um, I go there and it seems like I just, you know it's once every few months it's six months or whatever it is and I, I was there for lunch about two months ago with a friend and I walk in and it's Man. like they know exactly who you are I want to hang out with you outside the show <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry let's go, go ahead this week. No, yeah. this week next week well. <laughs> yeah. but I mean I walk in and they act like you know they know you know, I mean there are, there are details that are that are that, that come out and you go so is there a database? Is that what happens? Does somebody enter? Is there a secret uh, a database where this is entered into? Because there's no way everybody remembers. I'm not that memorable. I'm a little memorable. Not that memorable. I'm more than you might think, but uh, <laughs> we we do keep a certain amount of notes. Just I mean, I, so when you make a reservation, it's checked against that database, and there's some. Are you giving away a trade secret here? Well, I I know. For instance, we get regulars on the chef's table. If you're coming in on the chef's table, and you if you've been there w within the last three years, I know what you had. Wow, I I have records what you what you ate, what you drank, and part of my job is to make sure that none of the stuff you had before comes out again. Crazy as a reminder to chef because we do things by by season and cycle. Okay, no one does that in the world. You're it. It's just it's just it's just commanders. Nobody else does that. I can't imagine. It's um, too sophisticated. It's too much work. For New Orleans, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they intend to do that. There's a hundred other restaurants listed right now, but we're going to start doing that tomorrow, <laughs> and they're never going to get around to doing it. Now give me a year and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to wrap up. Any other closing comments, Margo? I think we're out of time. I hate this. We're going to have to have you guys back. This was—I'd like to do this for about three more hours. Cool. Um, anything? Mm, I, I'm a, I'm a no because I once I keep going, I, I, they will not be able to leave. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep, we'll, after we turn off the mics, we'll continue this conversation. Thank you cool. so much for coming. Thank uh, my you. pleasure. Thank what you. What a blessing Thanks to have you here. Me. Yes, thank you, thank you all yeah. so yeah. much. Yeah. Really wonderful. This has been Midnight oh, Menu Plus delightful. One. You can find us on uh, itsneworleans.com where you can find other great shows about New Orleans. And you can also... Um, see, I don't have my script with me. We're going to we're gonna have to edit that part in. I can't remember that big, long part. That's all right. We hope they just enjoyed the show. Let's do the thing Oh, right. Okay. This has been...
This has been Midnight Menu Plus One, and we, Ray and I would like to thank Tree and Argyle from yes. Commander's Palace spending the, a wonderful evening with us here. It's been delightful. Thank you, Margo. Thank you all very much. Good night. You know Labor Day signals the unofficial end of summer, but not the end of your outdoor projects. Lowe's helps you do it right and helps you save with Labor Day deals throughout the store. Shop now and get two bags of Stay Green Potty Mix for $12. And keep your lawn looking neat and trim with a Craftsman 2-Cycle 17-inch gas string trimmer, now $20 off at just $119. Whatever's still on your to-do list this Labor Day, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Offers valid through 828. Soil offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii, U.S. only.